During this summer, we've been hearing from the Gospel of Luke, and during these last weeks, we've been hearing from the section of the Gospel where Jesus is walking to Jerusalem. That is, he is going to his cross, to his death, and to his resurrection. Jesus seems to be very clear what he is about, and he's taking time and energy to try to take some of that clarity and put it in his disciples. So as they approach Jerusalem, he's teaching them about discipleship. And the closer they get to Jerusalem, the more clear and unambiguous his teaching is. This week I've been thinking about discipleship as the readings have been about that for the last couple weeks, and this week it also is about discipleship. And two things happened to me this week that helped me understand being a disciple. The first one was Tuesday night, Father Hoke and I were driving from Valentine back to North Platte. And it was late, it was between 8.30 and 9.30 at night. We had passed through Thedford and we were driving to Stapleton to drop off Father Anthony at his house. And right past Thedford, we hit a migration of Miller moths. And at first I thought it was just kind of unique because there were a few Millers, but it went on for five minutes and 10 minutes and 20 minutes and 30 minutes. It was like a snowstorm. They kept coming and coming and tens of thousands of them were losing their life on my windshield. Father Hoke started taking pictures with his camera. I couldn't see out the windshield, literally, by the time I got to Stapleton. I had never seen this before in my life. We got to Stapleton and we had to pull over and there were a line of about 13 cars and semis behind us that all pulled over, washing off our windshield so we could see from there. I had never seen that before in my life. And I thought to myself, that's a little bit like discipleship. If you decide to follow Jesus, and if you go where he sends you, you're going to face opposition. So don't be surprised when that happens. In fact, be ready and expect it. You're going to face opposition. As we were driving down Highway 83, there were a million millers going up Highway 83. They were going north. And at first I thought to myself, maybe they know something that we don't know. And then I thought to myself, if I start to see deer and rabbits and cattle running that way, I'm going to turn around and drive with them too because something happened to North Platte and I don't know what that is. Well, it's easy to want to turn and run with the crowd. It's easy to look just like everybody else in America. But if you do that, you're not going to be a disciple of Jesus. To be a follower of Jesus means we're going to stand up sometimes and run head on into a culture and another person that is just going with the crowd. So be ready for opposition if you're going to follow Jesus. Don't be surprised by it. The second thing that happened to me happened last night. Last night I went to the North Platte Public High School Bulldog football game. They were playing Lincoln Pius X. And Lincoln Pius is a Catholic school. So I called the head football coach of North Platte, who's a parishioner of ours and a friend of mine, and I asked him if he would like a priest on the sideline while they're playing a Catholic school. And he said, please, we'll take all the help we can get. So I was driving over to the stadium. I got my North Platte hat. And as I was driving to the stadium, something happened at the school this week that I did not know about. There were a group of students that were threatening to dress up like priests and sisters. And I guess they thought that that might help them as they were playing this Catholic school. Well, I'm grateful because the administration heard about it and the administration thought that's not very respectful. So you're not allowed to do that. I appreciate them doing that. Um, what I did not know is that they told the gatekeepers, the ticket takers, don't let in anybody dressed like a priest <laughs> unless they have identification and they can prove that they really are a priest. So I come walking up and I bought my ticket and I go and they go, um, <clears throat> do you have any proof that you're a priest? And I said, well, I'm wearing a collar. And they said, yeah, that's not good enough. Can you prove that you're, they knew who I was and they knew me, so they were just having fun with me. But they had asked, um, do you carry like a card that says I'm a Catholic priest? And it got me thinking, to be a disciple of Jesus isn't to be a member of a club. You don't just pull out your card and say, yeah, I'm a member, see, I'm a disciple of Jesus. Just like, see, I am a Catholic priest. By the way, I eventually said to them, well, what if I say, Dominus vobiscum et cum spiritu tuo, the Lord be with you and also with your spirit. And they said, that'd be good because not many people speak Latin. That's all the Latin I know, but they let me in at that point. <laughs> so 
So I thought to be a disciple isn't just to carry a card. And then I thought, what if I did have to prove that I was a Catholic priest? What if we did have to prove that we are disciples of Jesus Christ? If someone convicted you of being a disciple of Jesus, would you have enough evidence against you to prove that you are a disciple of Jesus? In your life, is there any evidence that you follow Jesus? In your life, is there any example you can point to and say, here's a decision I made because I'm a follower of Jesus, because I belong to Jesus Christ? With all that in mind, then, I opened the gospel for tonight. The harshest words that Jesus seems to speak. Unless you hate your mother and father, unless you're ready to hate your children, your wife, your husband, you cannot be my disciple. Unless you're willing to hate your very life, you cannot be my disciple. Unless you hate and give up every possession, you cannot be my disciple. Jesus is clear. He is unambiguous. If you want to follow Jesus, he must be first and center. And everything and everyone else must come second. And he points especially to those relationships that are most dear to us. Mom and dad, husband and wife, children. Now Jesus isn't saying hate them. What he's saying is the Greek word that we translate as hate really means to prioritize. So what he's saying is prioritize. If I am your savior, if I am your God, if you're my disciple, then I should be front and center. And every decision you make in your life, especially every decision you make with your mom and dad, with your husband and wife, with your children, every one of those decisions must be made in light of how it helps you be a disciple of me. And if any of those decisions you make with your family take you away from being a disciple of me, you cannot be my disciple. That's harsh. I especially think our culture needs to hear that. I especially think when I look at moms and dads and some of the choices they make with their children, their children are everything to them. They should be. But if Jesus isn't first, and if their decisions don't help their children better follow Jesus, then we cannot be his disciple. Tonight we have a family that wants to baptize their child because they want this child to be a disciple. They want this child to belong to Jesus, and they want Christ to be number one. So we thank God for that, and I invite you to come forward. And the godparents might have to sit back down, so feel free to come up if you're able, and if you'd rather be seated.